Hail Pandawans and journeymen walking that illustrated path. I wanted to go through a little sort of a, a walkthrough on the way that I create, you know, characters and villains. This is the way I design them for you know, everything I've worked on from all the video games, uh, for my own stories and projects, album covers. This is the process I've done. Now, it's not anything different really than what a lot of people do, but I'm just going to kind of go through the steps and show you how I kind of augment the characters and go, you know, add to them as I go along, things like that. So, okay, there, that's the final one. We're going to go from here. So basically, I always make a base figure and it's usually something like this, you know, big old beefy, you know, muscular guy. None of the, none of the characters in my world uh, miss, you know, bench day and leg day and all that sort of stuff. They're constantly, you know, working out. <laughs> now, if I'm doing something that's, you know, more roguelike or, you know, mage or some, something that's less uh, athletic, I'll make something, you know, lankier or thinner and stuff like that. So with this character here, I'm like, okay, a lot of times when you're working with a, a, a writer or other creative dudes on the team, there's already a character existing, but sometimes there's no character created at all. And it's up to you, the artist, to provide the vision. So we've done that many, many times, you know, especially with the heroes for the uh, War 3 expansion, Frozen Throne. Like, we just came up with Anubarak, Kaothas, and, you know, uh, Shadowhunter guy, uh, what's his name, Zul'jin. Like, we just made all these uh, characters. And just by creating artwork. And, and then design was like, cool. And then they made a, a kid after that. So, okay, enough of just boring, naked uh, Barbie uh, dude here. So let's go to, so the, that was the base. And I know this is rough. I'll go over it. But I go, we need, we need a theme. What is this character's theme? And so for this one, I wanted to just pick the theme of a lion. And this is very rough here, but I do the little overlay there. And why did I pick a lion? It's like, well, lions to me, like I wanted to make like some kind of night. Uh, I, I've been toying with this idea called Saturday nights or, you know, 30 days of nights where I just focus on creating a night a week. Or maybe if I, uh, if I have the ability to do that, making one every day for 30 days, that could be a really cool sketchbook. It could be a cool, just whatever. Um, but I wanted to make a night. So I wanted to pick a theme. I didn't want to make the boring traditional night you know, like, huzzah, you know, Renfair type dudes. Uh, no diss on Renfair. Uh, <laughs> but I, I picked lion. And I was like, well, why did you pick, uh, you know, a lion? It's like, well, lions are usually noble, you know, like knights. They're powerful, uh, regal. So, I mean, this could not, this could even be a, a step above a knight. It could be like a king. You know, the lion is the, you know, king of the land. So, I mean, that this is just all the things that are, just blasting through my head and I try to focus them. So if you look here, I'm going with the lion theme, got a lion shoulder pad, uh, maybe a, a claw shoulder pad over here on this side, a big old gauntlet uh, that's very reminiscent of, uh, in tribute to uh, Lionos from Thundercats. I love that gauntlet. What well, could have been better? Making two of them. <laughs> but I wanted to keep this guy's design a little more asymmetrical. So kind of bulkier here, bulkier here, even the cape, this tattered cape, would be asymmetrical. But, you know, going with the themes, you know, big old lion belt buckle. I mean, even down here, we got spots uh, on the knee knee, uh, knee armor. <laughs> Maybe we put some, uh, I don't know, claw symbology, things like that. And even on his sabatons, his armored boots, we could put like lion claws at the end. So that could, you know, he has clawed gauntlets, clawed sabatons. So what I want to get to also is this is how some of you may be familiar with this design. Um, this is how I did a lot of the armor designs for World of Warcraft. Uh, I did a shoot, I think most of tier one through three, or I, I forget how they numbered it. Was it two through four? But the early stuff, right? This one being Judgment, which was just done with a few simple colors. Bam, straight on. No, uh, nothing fancy, right? Just flipped the model. The, and wow, you, had, you couldn't have things asymmetrical at the time. I don't even know if you can now, I forget. But I would just draw it and then I would flip it in half. And I tried to keep a lot of simple colors. And I went with the theme of this being, you know, this this judgment, like it felt like a, a judge or, you know, also, you know, a jury and an execution or so. The masked face, you know, the book of law with the various, you know, seals and banners or, 
you know, maybe their little red ribbons that he won at the county fair. I don't know. <laughs> but also, you know, with the book of judgment goes the sword, right? Like, so it just kept it very, I don't know, kind of a, you know, dark and judicious. That sounds like a chocolate bar. <laughs> anyway, so I, I, this one was, you know, done pretty quick. And a lot of those armor sets were. Um, but then when there was a little more time, I was able to maybe go in and do a little bit more detail, a little bit more rendering and shading. And there's some that even were a step above this uh, in terms of rendering. I, I couldn't find the art, but the Corruptor Warlock art, um, I forget what the, they're all from the same one. There's the Cataclysm, I think, Shaman set where it had like the floating rocks and there was the Warrior one. I forget what it was called, but it had like multiple blades on it. Not the one that I did for like you know, the early, was it Gladiator one? Where he had like the axe on his head for a helmet. <laughs> Badass. That's what I mean. Keep, you know, you got a theme, reinforce it. He's got axes on his shoulder pads. He's <laughs> got axes on his helmet. So, yeah. So uh, check those out if you can. Uh, I couldn't find them online. I'm sorry. And I didn't have them on my computer handy. So uh, let me get rid of these images here and then show you what we got here. So here is... Uh, why are we not moving? Let's see. Let me, sorry, this is uh, my computer. I've been having that. There we go. Having issues with delay on it. And look at that. I'm not. I'm not even touching the mouse, and it's not letting me go, let it go. Anyways, technical issues. Sorry. Um, so here's you know right here's the one that I did. And normally I just do the front shot pose, and I don't worry about doing a back usually unless there's something iconic or like like Blade Master, like how does the banner attach? It just kind of sits there. So I didn't even have to do that. But if there's a certain uh, symbol on the on the cape or if there's, you know, a fancy way that the quivers for the arrows connect, I'll do a back. But I, I like just letting the artist come up with some because then they can, I don't know, feel like feel feel more uh, creative ownership to this. They're getting, they're getting handed the front view. It's like, well, what's the back view look like? Well, you let me know. And then, you know, we do a little bit of art direction on that if we need to make sure it keeps to the theme of lions, you know, wouldn't want to have some goat or Capricorn head on the back of this guy's, you know, cape. It's got to be lion, leonine. Um, but a lot of times if I have a little bit more um, time, I will do a little bit more of a pose. Now, this pose is pretty simple, but I like doing this as opposed to the... Um, just the front on sketch, because it gives you a little bit more of a, you know, three quarter view. Um, you know, it shows a little bit more of the asymmetry of the pose so the artist can go like, oh, that's what the outside of his arm looks like. This looks like the inside of the arm looks like. Okay. Um, and so that's, that's what I'll do. And, but I still like to try to keep it very, very simple because as a, as a concept artist, it's your job to convey what this character looks like to the 3D modeler, to the art director, um, things like that. You don't want to be doing some crazy dynamic Spider-Man or Spawn pose uh, because with you know arms and stuff foreshortened and things like that. Because it'll, it's going to be more difficult for the modeler to figure out what you're trying to do. So yeah, as the concept artist, you know, don't worry about elaborate poses. Now, for pure art's sake, as an artist absolutely make the pose however you want but when you know it's your job to say how this hamburger is made you know don't be uh don't be throwing all kinds of weird stuff going just showing the basic ingredients of what these characters are and i've actually had um i've done this for so long that my artwork has actually been compromised like, well i shouldn't say compromise that sounds dramatic my artwork has uh devolved to i need to get back into drawing more dynamic poses like I did with some of my earlier artwork. But because I've been doing this, you know, concept and art direction, in order to convey something that's clean and concise, I had to limit the amount of, you know, flash and, and flavor, you know, that I would do on a pose and keep it very simple. And a lot of times it looks great. Ah, it's just a powerful looking character pose. It's like, yeah, but that gets kind of old when you're trying to create artwork for yourself. And I, I realize I'm rambling here. Sorry about all that. Um, but yeah, so I, that's something now, hopefully in future videos, and if you're following my artwork, you'll see that I'm trying to push some of the poses. And I'm not going to do it on all of them because sometimes just a cool stoic pose is great. Okay, so this was the basic front view with the, Le the Leo 9 sort of themes. And this is what I ended up with. And I, I have a more clean version I'll show you, but I kept the basic concepts of 
well, let's do uh, lion shoulder pad, big old lion clawed gauntlet with the lion, you know, World Wrestling Federation belt. Uh, let's give him a little smaller uh, lion clawed gauntlet here, because what's better than one? Three. I failed. I only have two. <laughs> I sort of put on, uh, I don't know the name of it, but like the sort of the Roman, the Roman army, like uh, pleated skirts, whatever they wear. <laughs> I don't know. The leather strappies or whatever. Those things look cool. And uh, I also threw in some rough ideas. So as you can see, I had the clawed gauntlet. Well, what was I just saying? I usually don't do the back of it. This one I did because the modeler is going to need to know what that looks like. So it's actually, I should have swapped things possibly. But this one, you know, I could have put it here and shown the back, but then he, the artist would also need to know what the interior looks like. So I wanted to focus on that. And then I did just a quick sort of a, you know, is it a sword, spear, something? Like I've seen some of those like the lion hunters of the African tribes where they have this this shield, but with also this awesome, you know, hunting spear. So I wanted to try to convey that, you know, maybe combine those shapes a bit to, to, to add a little bit more of that lion theme uh, to this. Okay, so let me zoom back here. Okay, so from, from then, once I get this rough down, now I'm gonna go in and start doing uh, a little bit tighter uh, lines. Now let me get rid of that, all that other stuff. So you can see here, you know, I put the little lion claws on his little boots and they also have the straps sort of like his, his little mini skirt there. <laughs> um, I just threw in some quick iconography on the, on the, the knee pads. Um, uh, but yeah, so I'm following the same motif for the smaller clawed gauntlet as I am with the large one. Got a little bit of power coming from this. Like maybe it's, uh, magic or maybe it's you know mechanical or something um and then i started going again the big lion head lion head helmet now if you look on the earlier one i did not have that i had it more of like he had a crown or something but i wanted to keep that lion theme going and it's actually where i strayed a bit from the original concept but i asked i i i, I pull myself back into this and sort of have a nice little compromise um, so you can see there that he had more of the crown and then here he's got the, uh, you know, a lion head. So from there, I do more finished lines and these are sort of the, here was the previous one, a little bit rough. And here is the, the level of, you know, the finished lines. Let me, uh, zoom in there. So I, I rough in the basic shapes now. I'm trying not to get too detailed. Um, now, most of the games that that I worked on, you see your characters in three quarter view, or you know that that kind of top down view from the RTSs. So you want to you want to have you know the focus be on the upper torso, and then it really doesn't matter. Uh, and I, I don't mean that literally, but it, it's not as important on the on the the because you'll see like the little fronts of the feet and stuff like that. The foots is. <laughs> Um, but you won't see it, but say you're just making a piece of artwork, you know, that, you know, you want to make sure that it has enough detail, but you don't want to complicate the detail by adding, uh, heavy texturing on there. So what I'm basically getting at is if you have a very simple model, you could do some different, you know, some more elaborate texturing, or if you have an elaborate model, you don't need to go as heavy on the texturing. Um, if you do, you know, you have the he heavy detailed model, heavy detailed texturing, you, you, a lot of times you end up at mud, at least with the, the game styles that I worked on, which again were three quarter view and, you know, a lot of times far away from the character, the God view, as they call it. I know there's games where you're, you know, they, co they combine both detailed model and detailed textures and it looks fine. That's actually not the type of artwork that I like to do or have worked on. I, I like keeping it a little bit more simple, letting the, the model, uh, not be dominated by, you know, a bunch of noisy textures. I prefer the, you know, the, the, the colors and things like that um, to be able to, sh you know, show through a little bit. Um, so I was going back to the, when I had the original design without the helmet, I'm like, well, if you're making a character, maybe, maybe not, they might need to have what the character looks like without his helmet. Or maybe, you know, the helmet is a, you know, nowadays in games, you have upgrades for, you know, level one, two, three, whatever, or 
there's you know various skins and things that you can add to the character so maybe you know giving them extra things like does this guy really look like he needs <laughs> the sword shield spear thing at all he's got the wolverine clawed gauntlet here he's got the magic one here it's like well yeah you can always keep adding to the thing i i know that a lot of people say less is more i that's not literally figuratively whatever true <laughs> more is more um i used to have that uh, arguments with everyone where we would make you know every character so like in in, in warcraft or wow it's like well the level one guy looks like he's like level five already it's like we should tone him down it's like back off no i want to start off looking like a hero not some you know some some bum you right you know with, with shredded stuff i know we we have that too but it, it, at least with warcraft uh the rts you know our footman looked awesome our grunt looked awesome and it's like well what happens when you get to level five it's like well you make your level five guy look like level 10. And I'm like, don't don't follow down this path because I'm just going to keep saying, well, what about level 10? Well, he's going to look like level 20. No, not level 15. Now you got to up it. <laughs> Reinforce that theme. <laughs> now, of course, there always comes a point where it's hard to see the, the levels of coolness because he's just piled on with weapons and all that. It's like, okay, well, that that's fine. Now you make a new character. <laughs> you know, design a new character and start again. But I always enjoyed having really physically cool-looking characters uh, right when you start, I don't want to have to wait, even if it's five, 10 minutes, you know, just let my character look cool to start with. Right. And that all goes to that base pose, that base pose of just a big badass looking warrior type or a, a cool, sinister, sneaky rogue or, you know, assassin type. So that's, that's, uh, where I was going with that. So after this, you know, this is pretty much all the modeler needs, but you know, if you want to con keep continuing um, and, and do the textures, you know, show them the, what the color schemes are. And a lot of times it's important if it's a specific character. Sometimes it's just like, yeah, man, whatever colors, you know, fit the, you know, the thing. Like, so for, for, for Alliance, you know, the, the steel colors, the, the blue, the gold, you know, trim. You can make any character and wrap them in that color scheme and he's going to look good. Same with Horde, you know, the green or blue bodies of the Horde or the Orcs or Trolls and then you know, red shoulder pads and, and, you know, black, you know, gray steel or, you know, bone tusks, things like that, that all fits. And you could wrap any of them in there and it's going to look awesome. Um, so what I did here is that I made, I'm doing the shadows on this guy, right? And it's like, oh my goodness, they're purple. It's like, yeah, well, I wanted to keep this character feeling regal, right? And purple, I think is the most regal of all colors or royal of all colors, or maybe it's blue. I think it's blue or purple. Well, Prince Prince had purple, and you know he's the prince, so gotta you know keep that uh, that royalty theme going. <laughs> so I did some quick shadows and all that. So I didn't do anything over here because I'm already doing it here. Um, and then I also like to make a silhouette uh, shape. Now I know a lot of the artists will do like quick masks and all that. I tend to just draw, you know, I fill in the shape of the character. And then I always can go back to this silhouette layer and just select the character. I guess, again, similarly to the mask. I just never really learned how to work with the quick mask very well. I know a lot of the artists on my teams, you know, were, you know, super proficient and fluent in that stuff. And I just always just did this thing. Um, okay. So let's see what we got. Okay. So there is our final lines. And. Boom, there's, I got the little color swatches here. So I know that I wanted to create this regal theme, right? So I wanted to pick some golds. I wanted to pick a couple, uh, you know, like some of this purple and, and sort of gray color for the, the purples. And then I had orange and green. And I, I thought that would look really nice with the, the contrast with, you know, the gold. So let's see. Boom, here's the base colors. And what I did was I sort of, you know, broke these down and kept them very simple. Now with the shadow underneath, you can see what that purple does to these colors. It adds just a level of richness where this is kind of just without the shadows, sort of plain, flat, all that. And of course, you know, the shadows will, will 
make it look nicer. But what's great about, you know, this is Photoshop for you artists who are not familiar with it. Um, I got that base shadow of purplish stuff under there, but I could change that and look at like, look what having greener shadows does. You know, it adds just like this sort of, you know, I don't know, eeriness to it. Here's more, you know, fiery red and things like that. Like you could do a lot of very cool things. And this is what it looks like with just the base um, gray shadows. It, it sort of loses a little bit of that, that richness and that color palette that, you know, I love, I love those, you know, highly saturated colors. I love, you know, the rich and, you know, even on things that are supposed to be spooky and undead or dark and dreary, I still like having those colors on there. So let me zoom back just a little bit so you can see everything. Okay, now this is where a lot of uh, little shenanigans happen and I start experimenting. I go, okay, well, I have my flat colors, right? Let me go through here. I have my base lines, my clean lines. I have my shadow layer. And now I have my base colors. So now, obviously, if I have shadow and base, what do I need? I need <laughs> shadow and base, uh, rhythm and blues. <laughs> no, I need to have some highlights. I need to have some of that shine, the stuff that pops, you know, makes it look like shiny, gilded, fancy armor for our lion knight here. So let's see. So I start adding. These are all, you know, for people who are into Photoshop. This is just a quick color layer. I add green over these areas that I kind of want to add a little bit of a glow to. And this doesn't always follow this path. I, I kind of just mix and match stuff until it gets to the look that I want. So now I'm going to add some shines. So as you can see, I'm just adding, like it's, it's easy to see right here on our clawed gauntlet that we did not rip off from Thundercats. Um, nothing changes other than I'm adding some yellow, some bright yellow uh, to the, to the um, gauntlet. If we look at the, at the feats, uh, and I know I said that wrong. It should be the footses. <laughs> um, I added just highlights. And this is basically just an overlay layer. And I don't know if it'll show up very good. Let me see. It's basically just a, you know, a, a white color that when you use the overlay layer on top of any other color, it'll brighten that color. So if I overlay the white color on green, it'll be a, a brighter green. If I do it on gold, it'll be a brighter gold. So you can experiment with that, but that's something that I do, you know, basically every time because it's just quick and easy way to do things. Now, these are just sort of, like I said, quick concepts. I don't necessarily do this when I'm making, you know, album covers or, you know, book covers or anything like that. I'll actually go in with the color and, uh, you know, do the, the highlights in yellow on the yellow. And I don't always just do the overlay, but the overlay helps out, get it really quick. And uh, it's great for the artist because it, uh, it doesn't get too labored down in, in the textures and stuff. So I'm, I'm adding just more shines to it. Now, this one is just adding some glows. Like if you look, <laughs> glows, um, you could look on the Claude Magic. I just do a overlay of yellow on that. And you can see that also on all the little green areas and even on our character's skin. I add that glow and it just gets it, you know, a nice, it, it feels more realistic. It has like the, the various colors going from the, the, the yellowy orange highlight to the purpley shadows. And it just starts making some beautifully rendered colors there. Oh, listen how sweet. Um, and now I have what's called the spot layer. And that's just pure white highlights usually that I will add onto things, right? So if you look at the, the gem here, I'm just adding a couple little white spots with the claws. I'm adding some things like that. Don't really need to do that, but it just sort of helps pop out uh, that sort of thing. And if you notice, I really just did that on the upper torso. And I really didn't do any of that on the lower torso. Not because I, I don't think that it could use it. I just want to have a bit of a focus. Now, I'm not... You know, I'm not even doing this super correct, 
but I like to have a bit of the focus and then the feet because again with the type of games that I made and even you know even if you're like awesome artists like Rob Liefeld it's like feet who needs them put them behind some you know rubble and things like that but on an album cover on a book cover you really want to focus on this is the main area right of your character and then the the, the lower area it's still important but you don't want to have everything drawing the same amount of focus all the time right so with this character you know what who is he the theme was a lion knight not lion like he's not telling the truth this is a noble knight or is he a a, a, a vile knight you know we don't know you know this could be one character you know lion theme like leorath the unconquered right or it could be uh well I did some extra texture variations on this guy. It could be more than one guy if we really want to. Let me see if I do this correctly here. Let's get rid of all the golds. And we'll add just a different color scheme. So if is this a, a, a team of maybe lion knights, you know, warriors? Like, is there like a panther? Is there a tiger? Is there, you know, whatever, a white white tiger or is there like you know the cheetah is that going to be the smaller base model and you know more quick like Cheetara from Lo <laughs> thundercats totally not trying to copy this guys it just happens like that <laughs> but let me go through and add those uh shines so we'll back that off a little sorry but i did basically the same thing i just took the colors from the previous shine and i changed them to be a bit more of a blue and then instead of going with like those warm oranges and things, I went with like kind of pinks and purples to kind of convey a mystical and darker sort of, you know, magic or power with this guy. And there's the spot layer where it's just white colors. I don't think I even changed it. Now I could probably, let's see if it does anything. I could probably tweak that to be more of a, a, a bluish color, but I don't know if that would work. And I don't have it set. That's where it's a little more pink, see? Like, do that you can see it gets really warmed up but i could put a little bit more of a blue texture on there and that yeah that doesn't look bad let's undo and see what there's a big difference there's a very little difference but you know it, it helps <laughs> so yeah and then so i this layer i actually didn't even really do anything with so we're just going to leave that off right good yep yeah, like we're going to delete that from the wipe that from the face so Usually after that, that's when I am finished, and I will add my little signature at the bottom. But let's get rid of this, uh, the, the, the next generation one, and let's start, let's stick with our first version, you know, whether it's uh, King Leorath, or, you know, Lionar, the young, the, the young warrior, or maybe if it were me, this would be your base foot soldier for the great lion tribe army <laughs> and then the second level and third level let alone the king would be even way more badass constantly keep reinforcing those themes ah but that's what i love doing i love creating these characters and pick a theme and running with it and i look at it now i go i probably could have done something different here there whatever but that that is the way that i uh usually would go through and create characters I did that for, you know, all my time at Blizzard. I did that for my own projects uh, where I just have all the characters off the same base pose and I just draw on top of them so I can, you know, send that to the artist. I've done this for, you know, I do this on my album covers. I'll usually draw a picture of the new version for, say, if it's Hammerfall, the new version of their warrior, Hector. And I'll go, here's what he looks like as a demon. And then the next album, here's what he looks like as a, you know, an angel. And then here's what he looks like. Uh, I can't actually tell you because uh, we're working on stuff. <laughs> More metal to come. All right. Well, whether this is Leonar the foot soldier or King Leorath, you know, the unconquered. This is how I make my characters. I hope you like this rambling, sprawling, nearly, what, 30 minutes? Crumbs, bones, that's a long time to ramble. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this. And, uh. You know what I like to say at the end of these panda wands. What you got to remember? Your ABCs. Always be creating. Hail.